Hey guys, what's up? Steve Mortensen here. And today I'm gonna do the Monster Bass Box Challenge. That's right, I'm gonna go out. It's about maybe 12 o'clock today. So I got about six hours or so before it gets dark out, six, seven hours, something like that. I'm gonna go out and see if I can catch a bass on every single lure that's in the Monster Bass Box. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys all the baits that are in here, give you a few tips and tricks. And then at the end, I'm gonna go out, use these baits and see what we can do. So I don't know if I'll catch them on all the baits or not, but I got some small mouth spots and some large mouth spots up in some channels. So let's go out and see what I can do. But first, let me show you the baits that are in this box. And today I'm excited again because I just got my Monster Bass box again. That's right, if you guys, it's like Christmas all over again. I love it every single month. It's like Christmas or my birthday. So, but it's, it's a great, great item. You guys should check it out. If you've never heard of Monster Bass, what it is, it's a monthly subscription, comes to your house. And these baits in here are specifically designed for you. So depending on the area that you live, you know, me, I'm up in Wisconsin. So this is the Great Lakes box. So. The baits in here are more geared and focused towards the lakes that I fish. Also, the baits in each box that come every single month are also time sensitive. So, meaning that the choice of baits are also specifically geared towards whatever patterns those fish should be on that time of year. Right now you're looking at pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn where I am right now up here in Wisconsin uh, in the month of May. So these baits right here are going to be targeting bass in those uh, those seasonal patterns. So let's open it up and I want to show you guys the baits that are in here. Maybe a few little tr tips and tricks that you can do with some of these baits. All right. First bait I'm going to show you is by Booyah Bait Company and this is the Squelcher Buzz Bait. This thing is really cool. Let me open this thing up and I want to show you guys this buzz bait. So, so the first thing you're going to notice on this buzz bait it's got a nice big uh, uh, hook on here. This is a nice big wide gap, uh, five aught hook, super razor sharp. And a good way to test your hooks, you know, if you just tap them like this, you know, you can say, oh yeah, that's a sharp hook. But if you actually take it and you try to slide it against your thumbnail, if it sticks and it does not slide, you got a super sharp hook. If not, you definitely want to take, get yourself, you know, a nice hook sharpener and just run a few passes on each side of that hook. But these Booyah, uh, these Booyah buzz baits, the, uh, the squelcher, you do not need to sharpen these hooks out of the package. These are razor sharp. Another thing about the hook you're gonna notice, if you look at where the blade ends right here and from where the hook is, you got a nice, nice uh, distance between here and the hook. Why is that important? So when that fish comes up and he's gonna bite that hook, he's not hitting the blade. Some buzz baits, the hooks are really close to where the blade is. So you don't have much of a gap between the hook and where that blade ends. So that's very important when you're when you're looking at uh, buzz baits. So this should help you to definitely get a few more strikes when they're coming up and blowing at it and missing at it. An uh, issue a lot of guys have when they're throwing buzz baits, for one, you know, you gotta slow down sometimes because they come up and they strike at it and miss it. And it's hard to fish a buzz bait slow unless you got the right design. With this Booyah buzz bait, if you look at it, it's got a big blade on here. A big blade. Most blades aren't this big on buzz baits. They're usually a little bit smaller. That's gonna cause the bait to uh, stay on the surface a lot easier. This also has, it's not flat. A lot of them are usually flat. This one's actually curved. It's got a little curve shape to it. That's gonna also help to get that bait up higher right away when, you, when it hits the water and you'll be able to work it back all the way to the boat and keep that bait right up on the surface. The other thing that added even more to it, if you look at the head design, look at that thing right here, this part. This thing is flat like a surfboard. And it's gonna basically help that bait to ride on top of the water surface. And it's actually got a little tiny lip on the bottom down here. And that's gonna actually help it so it doesn't go left or right and keep it running true in the water. If you are, 
fishing a certain structure, and let's say you're not in, uh, uh, not fishing open water and there's a dock or a pier or some brush or a shoreline and you want that bait to go left or right, all you need to do is bend this to the left or bend this to the right and now you're going to have a directional bait. So you could have uh, baits that, you know, that are, that are going to run a little bit more to the left or to the right. So that's a cool little tip for you guys. So uh, it's got a nice skirt on here, uh, super strong. So when you go to set that hook with that braided line, um, it's not going to give it all. And, and I would recommend uh, what you want to do is get yourself a nice, uh, a nice seven foot. Uh, I use a seven foot St. Croix uh, medium or medium heavy rod. I usually cut like the medium heavy uh, bait casting rod for, for choice of what you want. Um, and you want a, a reel that has a, like a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio, so you can really pick up that line fast. So you could even go faster if you want, but that's really up to you. So the key is not to jerk it away and reel in really fast when they blow up at it. Wait until you feel that fish actually biting the bait, all right? So, so that's a really cool bait. It's the Booyah, uh, Booyah Bait Company Squelcher. So that, that's, that's, that's number one. Number two, bait made by a company in Australia which is pretty cool, it's the Chaser Rip Snorter. I'm looking forward to trying this bait. So this is pretty cool. So what this is, uh, this little bait, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a weedless bait, so when you guys fish this, it's gonna come through some pretty thick cover. And the nice thing is you can fish it like, like a crankbait or a spinnerbait. So you can work it through you know, some nice lily pads, some nice weeds, and you should have no problem because it's got a totally weedless uh, set up on here and if you notice it when it comes through the water it's got this little blade on here which is really cool so you can actually swim that back and it's going to put off a little extra flash I'm really excited to get out and try this bait I don't know a lot about it but because uh, they're they're a company like they're out of Australia but I've been kind of watching them and uh, really cool to try this bait and see what happens so now let's release the Kraken what am I talking about <laughs> talking about the Kraken jerk bait right here by Lunker Hut. So this is a kind of a, a cool little bait right here by Lunker Hut. It's a, it's a floating crankbait. It's a small little crankbait. If you know, a lot of crankbaits are bigger. And this time of year in the spring, you want, you want some little uh, smaller baits. This one also, uh, when you guys are working this bait, you want a little shorter rod, like, like a 6.6 six or a 6.8 uh, foot medium action rod, because you, know, you want to be able, you want that rod to absorb that hook set. You know, you don't want you don't want to be pulling hooks out, you know, with these hooks, and you know, you don't want to be sitting there and just, you know, cracking those fish, you know, cracking them with a cracking. You know, you don't want to crack that hook set. You just kind of want to, you know, get them in nice and good because they're smaller hooks and you don't want them to come out. And the nice thing, this also has some ball bearings in here, so when you go and you cast it, those ball bearings are going to go to the back of the bait, help you get an extra long cast. So that's kind of cool. So that, that's a pretty cool bait. And this one goes zero to six feet so so you can work the depths where those fish are going to be right now this time here like i said that that's kind of key all right now as far as this uh the kraken i'm going to try this one i don't know if it's going to work that good as far as the color choice for the body of water i'm on but this is the one they gave me so i'll just have to see what happens maybe it's something different maybe they'll bite it maybe they won't but we'll see because this one kind of looks like kind of like uh i think this is called the sea what's this one the sea the seasick so in my opinion, it kind of looks like something that would work better, you know, on Lake Michigan, kind of like a small salmon or trout or something like that. But I'm going to try this one, put this one on, and we'll see how this one, how this one works. But, uh, you know, as long as I think I, I get it moving along pretty good along the bottom or, you know, out there in the water column, I think this one should hopefully produce a strike. Now we also have another type of crankbait, and this one is kind of cool. I, I really want to try this one. And uh, this is the Ultimate Strike Shad. And this is a really cool bait. I want to open this up and show you guys the the color of this bait and just what it looks like. Cause I don't know, I'm excited to try this. So we'll we'll see what happens with this one. If you look at this, it's got some really cool 3D looking eyes. The paint is like a perch color on this thing. The hooks look quality. I mean, they're nice quality hooks and everything. So this is gonna be cool. So so this bait right here, it's got rattles in it too. But this one's gonna put out a lot of vibration. And it's gonna even. And it's designed so when you guys work this crankbait, you can work it really slow. All right, and when you're working it slow, it's still gonna disperse a lot of water. 
and it's going to put out a lot of vibration and help you guys trigger some strikes. So, so this little crankbait right here, I'm, I'm really looking excited to try this one and see see how this one can put some uh, some nice big fish in the boat. Now we got some soft plastics. This company I'm really excited about. I've actually been working with this company for for a little while now, and I was really excited to hear that they were going to be in Monster Bass. This is the revealing or the unleashing of the rabid baits, rabid craw. Check that out, man. Little tiny soft plastic with infused rabbit hair. This thing. You, you can work this many different ways, but you guys definitely got to try out this the rabbit baits they, they have several different baits on the market This is one of my favorite ones a little craw because it mimics the different craw and uh, It's just a hot little bait and it stands up uh, The test of time too meaning that it's very durable these little rabbit hairs on here They don't pull out real easy So you, you can catch quite a few fish on each one of these because I've been using these for a little while now So you guys are gonna really like that All right, I'm going to show you what I'm doing uh, for the rabbit baits. Bait, how I'm going to rig this one up is I'm just going to use a Z-Man uh, Power Finesse Jig Head right here in a 1 10 ounce. I'm going to take this one right here and just rig the little rabbit craw on there. I think that should be a good little, uh, good little bait as far as like a Ned rig and stuff like that. So we'll see how that thing looks. Yeah, that should be pretty good. So there you go. Yep, so that, 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 that should work pretty good right there. So we're gonna try that one out here and uh, see how that works. Another soft plastics that they have in here, the Jean LaRue. Uh, Jean LaRue is, and they've been around a long time, Jean LaRue, and this is the Tattletail Worm. And uh, let me show you what these guys look like in here. I'll open this up. So what this is, this is a six inch worm and it's got a nice little uh, thick design right here, the little egg sac, so you can work this wacky style if you want, which, which, which should work, but you can also uh, work this, like if you, if you put on um, uh, like a shaky head, this would work really good. So let's say you wanna, the, 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 the cool thing about this, let's say you wanna take this bait and you wanna throw it out there and you wanna dead stick it, meaning you don't even wanna move it, you just cast it out there and let it sit. The cool thing about it, if you look right here, on the tails, I know it might be hard to see, but it's got a little tiny paddle tail. Just, it's just a little micro tail. That little micro tail, when you're holding this perfectly still, is still gonna cause this thing to flutter and vibrate and just make some, just, just put out some really cool vibrating, uh, vibrating action that should help to draw some of those extra fish. And th this is a nice color, I'm looking forward to this. This color right here is, uh, what's this one? This is a watermelon pepper. So we'll see what that one does for me. But that's the, uh, the Tattletail Worm. Really looking forward to trying this one and seeing what, what happens with that one. Uh, I got a few things left in here. We got some hooks uh, in here by uh, Sandbar Tackle. These, these are nice premium quality hooks. This little variety pack, there's like three or four hooks in here. And they're actually a carbon steel hook. And I, I've been uh, using these for just a little while and they are razor sharp hooks, which is really nice. And these are nice little worm hooks. So, so those actually came in a box. And last but not least is a football head jig by Lifted Jigs. So this is kind of cool. Um, I was kind of looking at their jig, seeing some differences, what makes this totally different from some, some of the other football jigs out there. First thing is their paint job on here is not gonna come off, it's not gonna chip, it's gonna last a really, really long time. And the you know, nice thing about football head jigs is you know they're made for fishing rocks. And you definitely got to get a trailer on this, but if you look at this, here, let me pull some of the skirt back. This actually has a really cool little uh, corkscrew uh, attachment on here that's made, it's, you know, it's welded right in, or molded right into the lead head part of the football head, and that's going to help, that's where you thread on your trailer. So and you definitely want to experiment with different trailers, but I love the color, I love the skirt, the skirt's really nice on here. And you got to experiment with different colors, you know, different action skirts, and pretty much let the fish tell you what they want. For this type of uh, bait right here, I would definitely recommend like a seven foot medium rod. And you can, you know, go 15 to 20 pound line, unless you're gonna go deeper. If you're gonna fish deeper, I normally don't like to go 
with a lighter line, but you can go all the way down to 10, you know, maybe 12, somewhere around there. But you get to remember, you're usually fishing this around rocks, so you don't want the line to get nicked and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So you definitely got to check your line more if you're downsizing on your line. And what I would do is I would actually take this bait and I would drop it around, you know, rocks um, with a little heavier cover. And the nice thing about it, you know, when, when you do set the hook on this, this is like a sweeping action when you set the hook. Like this, once again, you don't want to, you don't want to crack that thing. Like you're flipping and pitching, you know, up to a little dock or some brush or something like that. It's more of a sweeping action with this. And uh, it's got a nice big wide gap on hook on there. Nice thing about a football head, let's say you're going to an area you've never been before. You can actually use this as, as a bait to feel the bottom and search the bottom out so you can feel what's down there. So when you're using your electronics, you can see something, take a football head jig, throw it out there and feel what that is. Oh, hey, maybe there's a stump there. Or there's a rock down here and mark those. Those are kind of what you can kind of call the, the spot on the spot. You look for a little structure and a football head is a great search bait to do that and, you know, to really feel what structure is down there. So that's all the baits that came in, in the Monster Bass box and I'm looking forward to uh, getting out and using them. And actually as a challenge, you know what I'm going to do right now? Before this video is done, I'm going to actually take all these baits. My goal is one day today, I'm going to go out, I'm going to use all these baits and try to catch a bass on every bait before the sun goes down today that came in this uh, this month's Monster Bass box. So, so I got to get out fishing guys and I'm really excited to try some of these baits. I don't know which one I'm going to try with first. I think I'm going to go to a smally spot. So I'm probably going to try the little football head and maybe the rip snorter and, uh, and also the rabbit baits, a uh, little rabbit craw. And see, see if that will uh, put a few. Oh, and the crankbait I can use too. I can try that right out there too in a smally spot. I'm going to go and then I'm going to go up and then try for some large mouth up in some channels and stuff. So let's, enough talking. Let me get fishing. I want to guys show you guys. Oh, one other thing too. If you guys want to give Monster Bass a try, what you got to do is click the link below. Click the link below. All right, I'm going to put a link down so you guys can click on it. And you guys type in the code SAVE15, SAVE15, and you'll get $15 off your first box of Monster Bass. So other than that, I hope you guys liked the videos. Please make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share my videos. And let me get fishing. All right, you guys noticed it was a little bit of a rough ride over here. So we'll see if I can keep some of these baits on bottom. And I uh, try to find a little protected area, but we'll see if I can find a few smallmouth over here. So let's uh, get fishing and see what happens. this fish folks. Rabbit bait does it. Oh my god. I don't even have my net out. I'm gonna have to lift this thing. Oh this is a giant smallmouth. This is a pig. Woohoo baby. Oh yeah. This thing I swear it looks like it's 19, 20 inches. Come on. Oh it's a giant. Look at that. 
That is a beautiful fish on the rabbit craw. On the rabbit craw. Look at that. Fish number one. So check out that smallmouth right there on the rabbit craw. Came in a monster bass box, the rabbit craw. That thing is just awesome. Just such a such a beautiful fish. Alright, let's let her go. That's fish number one. Alright, one bait down, a couple more to go. Whew. That was exciting. Alright. Alright, we'll put that one away. Now, try the uh, crankbait. The crankbait. Oh, let's see. Now let's try the crankbait. That's pretty good. Just like I said, the little bullocks and BBs in the back. So one thing I'm noticing right off the bat, that rip snorter, Cast like a bullet, even with this wind. I mean, this thing, it, it's like, it just flies right through the air. It's pretty amazing. So that, I definitely like that right now, but now let's see if it catches some fish. All right, now I'm gonna try the ultimate strike shad, that crankbait. But the thing is, this thing dies down a little deeper than I want it to in the area where the fish are holding right now. So I'm gonna be bouncing this thing off of the bottom. So we'll see if that can trigger a few reaction strikes and uh, see what happens. So far I've made a few casts with this crankbait and I really like it, I like the action. It comes through the water really good and it casts really good too, even with the wind. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that little football head jig and I'm going to put the uh, rabbit hair crawler, the rabbit crawl uh, uh, on the back of it as a trailer. I'm just going to thread that on there. There we go. Let's see what that does. Such powerful fish. Just, these fish are just amazing. Just how good they fight is just unbelievable. I mean, they're so powerful. Another big pig. <laughs> Love it. There you go, got that one right there. So that one was on the, uh, that little jig right here. So that one was on the jig. So I'm getting on there, but that actually has the, uh, that rabbit craw on the back, the rabbit craw. So another nice smallmouth.
of a rock bass on the Jean LaRue, LaRue uh, tattletale worm. So that's another one down. Not the right species, but that's alright. Hey guys, so I'm back in the studio. I got rained out today. Was out trying to do the Monster Bass Challenge. And I did pretty good. Out of the seven baits, I ended up catching uh, fish on four of them. So that was pretty good. I didn't really have the right situation for some of the other baits and the colors just weren't right for the body of water that I'm fishing. But the baits that I caught the fish on right away, I caught that big smallmouth on the rabbit craw. That was, that was the giant, and then I uh, decided to go up shallow and up in some channels, and I caught that that uh, rock bass, I think it was, or the largemouth, on the, uh, the Jean LaRue bait, and then I uh, decided to try that jerk bait for a little bit, and I did catch one on there, which I didn't think was going to happen, just because of the color, but because you're moving it pretty fast, I don't think they had a good eye on the color of the bait and then I ended up catching that last one on the uh, on the lifted jigs uh, paired up with the rabid craw on the tail end of it again so the ones I did not catch fish on was this one right here on the ultimate strike shad I tell you what though this bait comes through the water really nice and I was I was bouncing this thing off the bottom I can't even see it's got a little scratched up from hitting the rocks probably hard to see right there on the tip of the bait but uh, that was pretty cool bringing that one and then it, you know if you saw it was really windy out there and I tried throwing this one right here which was the, uh, the chase baits uh, the rip snorter and this thing casts like a bullet if I just had this in a different color I think I would have done really good kind of like maybe in like a, a gizzard chad or, or maybe even like a white or some type of minnow color I think this bait would have done really good because this thing cast it like a mile. Uh, it it might have even been a little too heavy. I would have liked to have seen maybe just a little lighter bait that uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't sink so much and uh, I could work it a little bit slower. And then of course the buzz bait, I didn't have a chance to try it all because the conditions just weren't right. But I want to show you guys another tip for the buzz bait, which is kind of cool. You know, when you're fishing buzz baits a lot, a lot of times, you know, fish will come up and they'll try striking at the bait and they miss it. So a lot of guys put trailer hooks on. When you get trailer hooks, they usually come like this in the package. You know, you get the hook and it's got the little piece of plastic on there. Well, rip that plastic off. You do not, because if, if you hook it this way with the plastic on, let me show you before I rip that off, you slide the plastic right through the hole like that. You can see that right there? That's, you don't want that. Because what's going to happen, that, it's not going to move. It's stationary, you know. You want this hook to be swinging freely. So you have a couple options that you could do. So let me get this off and I'll show you here. Uh, the first option um, would be to take the hook and put it over the eyelet like so. And then you could actually take that little piece of plastic that you just ripped off and you could slide that up over the barb of the hook, but then you got this big piece of plastic on there. So I got something a little better for you. So let me show you a little trick that I do that works. What you do is you save yourself some milk jugs, some soda bottles, anything plastic like that. And you cut out cut out a piece. As you can see, I cut out some pieces here. And then you get yourself a hole puncher. And you punch out a whole bunch of these. You just start punching away. I like I like doing, you know, a hundred of them. That way I got enough to last me all summer long. So, and then once you're done, you can see, see it punched out some of the plastic right there. So what you do is you take one of those pieces of plastic, if you can see that. And I got the hook on here just hanging down. 
and you just put that hook on over the barb and then the, the, the hook and you just slide it down. And you got to be careful though because it is kind of hard to get it on with the plastic, you know, because it it's a tough plastic, but you just slide that over just like so. Now, they can barely see that. Sometimes I'll even put a little drop of super glue on top of that, but now you got a, a bait that can come through the water really good on a surface. You got a hook that's free, and while you want that, if this is coming through the water, if there's a stump or a dock or something you're fishing, you want that to be able to bounce off of that. You do not want that uh, to, you know, to be straight because it'll hook up on the docks. Plus, this way, if you're fighting a fish on there, this way they're not uh, likely to throw the bait and spit the bait out of their mouth. So, so that's just a little tip for you guys. But other than that, I did pretty good today. I was kind of happy out there. And uh, once again, I was excited to do the Monster Bass Challenge. And we'll see what comes in next month's box. And maybe I'll be able to catch fish on all the baits in the box. And hopefully the conditions will be a little bit better. And maybe I'll have some great colors that work for the lakes that I fish. And we'll just have to see what happens. But other than that, I was pretty impressed with all the baits that came and uh, I look forward to getting out and using them some more, uh, especially the, uh, the the rabbit baits. And I really want to catch a, a fish on that crankbait right there. That's just just an awesome looking crankbait. And I think I'm going to even order some of the chase baits, the uh, the rip snorter. I think I'm going to order some of these in a couple colors that I really want to try and and see what it does and uh, see how this produces some fish because you could actually take off this little blade on the bottom and put like a treble hook on there or uh, you know or different size blades and stuff like that but other than that awesome bait came through the water really good cast it a mile long and uh, I look forward to catching some fish on that so once again I just want to thank you guys for watching make sure you guys uh, like subscribe and share the video and I'll see you guys on the water